The gentleman from Utah, Mr. Chaffetz. Uh, when did you first talk to uh, Attorney General Holder about this issue? Um, as best as I can recall, it came up in preparation for uh, his oversight hearings in, in May. Uh, he was asked about it, I think, by Chairman Issa. Uh, Do you still uh, hold Chairman. tight to the so you are you're suggesting that the, uh, the letters that you sent on February 4, 2011, to Senator Grassley, and again, another letter on May 2, 2011, to Senator Grassley, that the content of, that, of those two letters is complete and accurate, as best you know? Congressman, I, I've said uh, that's that a yes or no question. Is it complete accurate, Congressman? That's yes not, or no. Well, respectfully, that's not susceptible to a yes no answer. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, as the committee's report pointed out, there is a technical explanation for why uh, the allegation that ATF uh, sanctioned the sale of guns to straw purchasers who then transported them to Mexico is not an accurate statement, and so we uh, said that that was false. However, serious allegations have come to light, including the testimony of the agents today, that cause Attorney General Holder to want there to be an independent review of this matter, and he's initiated that review. So uh, we're not clinging to the statements in, in those letters. Uh, we're saying let's So if I said that I think somebody knowingly and willfully actually misled and lied to Congress, would I be off base? Respectfully, Congressman, you would be in, in that uh, we make every effort to provide truthful information to Congress. I know that's something that I I would like to highlight my role. On January 8th, remember, these, these letters came out on February 4th and May 2nd. But on January 8th, and I will quote from this uh, internal document here from the Phoenix Field Division that indicated on page 4, quote, currently our strategy is to allow the transfer of firearms could to continue to take place, albeit at a much slower pace, in order to further the investigation and allow for the identification of co-conspirators who would continue to operate and illegally traffic firearms to Mexican drug trafficking organizations, and it goes on there. The administration knew in January, before these letters came out, that it was on purpose, it would continue to operate and illegally traffic firearms to Mexico. How can that stand? And how can you and the Department of Justice and people who take responsibility for this allow the lies to continue to come to Congress? Why did this Obama administration purposely allow the illegal transfer of more than 2,000 weapons that they knew, according to this memo, were going to go to Mexico? Congressman, you have asked questions that the Office of the Inspector General is looking at, that this committee is looking at. And we I want answers from you. That's why you're, in, that's why you're here. You have this document. You know that this is true. This memo goes on to continue to say, and again in January, to date there have been five notable seizure events connected with the group. Approximately 53 firearms originally purchased by this group have been recovered. Three of these seizures have been in the country of Mexico. We knew that this was, these were going south. And yet in your letter that you state, quote, it remains the understanding our understanding that ATF's operation Fast and Furious did not knowingly permit straw purchase buyers to take guns into Mexico. That is patently and totally false. How do you do that? How do you do When this comes out in January and again in May, you write and you tell this Congress that they did not knowingly permit straw purchasers to take guns into Mexico, in total contradiction of the memo of January 8th. How does that happen? Congressman, I have explained to you that we do our best to provide the information to Congress as we know it. Uh, as allegations have come to light, uh, we have initiated an investigation and cooperating with this committee's investigation. Is Fast and Furious still ongoing? I, I, I don't believe so, Congressman. I'm, uh, At what point did the Attorney General, uh, did, he, did he order it that it be taken down? Did we stop doing it? At what point did they actually say, all right, enough is enough? The Attorney General made very clear as this uh, matter came to light that uh, guns should never be walked to Mexico. I, I want to know when the Attorney General actually got engaged in this. Why didn't he know about it? When did he know about it? He, or is he, he just oblivious to it? No, Congressman. He answered uh, Chairman Ice's question on the House Judiciary Committee. Uh, the, the question was uh, when. But I questioned him also on the House Judiciary Committee. If you remember, you were sitting in the row right behind him. And he said he didn't know when he first knew about it. So I'm trying to figure out when did he know about it, and then what did he do about it? He, he, he told Congressman Issa that he uh, first learned about it several weeks before the hearing in connection with press reports. And what I don't understand is when you go back and look at the record, President Obama knew about it back in March. If the President knew about it, why did the Attorney General know about it? And why are you issuing a memo uh, in May 
when the President of the United States in an interview with, I believe, Univision is saying, we know that there were some mistakes made. How does that happen? The President makes this comment, and then still, months later, you have the gall to issue a memo to this Congress saying, that's just false. It's not true. That does not add up, and that's what this investigation is going to continue to pursue. Yield back. Uh